So, I decided that we should do a painting today together called The Passion of the Craft. So, it's going to be a very individual painting. You can do whatever you want. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to tell you what you're going to need. You're going to need your own version of Passion of the Craft. So what I did was I read the version that is in the Bible, and I watched the movie, The Passion of the Christ, the Mel Gibson one. And then I put all of that into my head, and I mixed it all around, and came up with Anita's version. Okay? So you're going to have to do that for you. You are going to need brushes. You're going to need two pieces of red tape. You are going to need a Willow Tree Angel. Alright? Now, Willow Tree Angel, I don't know if you can get them everywhere, but if you can, then you can find something else and substitute it. You're going to need a couple of palms. You're going to need a lemon. You're going to need a Canadian nickel. And you're going to need a fake daisy. One that goes like this. You can band it yourself. You can get them at Walmart. Uh, a knife. And I think that's it. I think that's everything. Yeah. Okay. So this is what happens. Now there's a little bit of an acting involved in this. So if you're not an actor, then you might find it a little bit intimidating. And you can forego this lesson if you feel that way. Okay. So you've read it. You're ready. You're going to read it. And then you're going to act out some parts. And then the essence of what happens in, in the passion goes from you and into your painting. And that's what this is all about. Yours is not going to look just like mine. Your story might not be exactly the same. But it's, you know, the same. Okay. Oh, my paint's all out in front of me here, by the way. Okay. The Passion Painting of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Anita. It was two days before the Passover, and the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus and kill him. That same day, Judas, a buddy of Jesus, went to the high priests to spill the beans on Jesus' whereabouts in exchange for silver. Take your silver, have it in your hand. You are Judas. Thanks. Oh, God. Maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to be in trouble. Take the silver. Take it down. Because you have a real dilemma. You might kill yourself. Okay. Next, you need to take this. Just have it handy. Meanwhile, the Last Supper was being prepared, and Jesus said, Two of you are going to betray me today. They were all freaking out. My God. They were like, I won't. No way, Jesus. You're my friend. Peter was the most adamant that he would not betray. Blue. Mix it around. Get it really hard. I will not betray you. I have been with you from day one. But I will save you. Good. Perfect. That was foreshadowing. So then they all went to this little place called Gethsemane, and Jesus went to pray for a bit. When he came back, his friends were all totally asleep. So Jesus was like, Come on! You couldn't even stay awake for a little bit. Thanks a lot. God! Okay, so now he's real mad. In my head, I see red tape. I am going to put it, and you're going to put it on your painting like this. And you're going to wiggle really slow. You're really, really mad. Your friends didn't stay awake. That's only this one. I just can't believe it. They didn't stay awake. What kind of friends are that? And there, see that's the madness. He's so mad. You would be too. So then all of a sudden Judas and the guards show up. And old Judas, well he walks up to Jesus and he gives him a little kiss. And he says, Rabbi, 
And I think you know what happens when you did that. All right, so get your paint. Red, just to go over the red cross we just did. This is totally betrayal. Shake your head and die. Do a little bit of a tap in there. Watch out for that nickel. Okay. So the guards took action. And one of Jesus' friends draws out his sword. Pum. And he struck one of the guards. And he cut off his ear. And he cut off his ear. And he cut off that ear. Cut it off. There was a lot of green paint on that, by the way. And he probably didn't do it that many times because he did survive. So Jesus went over to this man and he put his hand there and he healed him. Just like that. Okay. So now we need our lemon. Jesus' friends took off and deserted him. So j Rock was taken to the ones who were looking for him earlier. These people all deserted him. What kind of friends were they? Take your lemon, put it in brown paint, deserted desert, brown, and you just bounce it like a ball. Easy. So Jesus was taken to a bunch of different people, like Punches the Pilot and that crazy old Herod. He ended up back in front of Punches eventually, and Punches was in a huge dilemma. He had no evidence against him. So he had no evidence against him, or if he doesn't crucify him, the crowd will go bonkers. No evidence. Crazy crowd. What is a man to do? That is definitely pink. Take it down and put it right angle, then you go right up. This one's hard. Go right down. Shake it. Perfect. Okay. So that one's tricky. Be careful. You could hurt your neck. So in a spark of brilliance, Punches decided he would ask the people what they wanted him to do. These were the same people that would go bonkers if Jesus wasn't killed. I wonder what they'll say. So they said, crucify him, crucify him. Kill the priest. Okay, so now take your willow tree angel. Hold it like this. Just spin it around. Be careful not to drop it. Dip it down into some yellow paint. And just lay it on it like that. So he said, oh, all right then, I will. So Jesus was tied to a big old wooden cross, walked for miles and miles, practically all uphill. He was so warm, so hot that day. Take your daisy, dip it in blue, because blue insinuates that water from him being sweaty. You got it. And this is what you have to do. You have to beat him now. It's around your neck. This is an example of what the cross might have been like. Oh my God, I am so tired. How did this happen to me? I did not ask for this. This is all uphill. Ugh. So the flower is like a homage for death. Okay, so he got to the mountain and in between he was put between two robbers. And he looked down at the people and then he looked up to the sky and he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? People gave him sour wine and vinegar. Like that would quench anyone's thirst. So then Jesus looked around and he looked to the heavens and he said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Take your brush, a little bit of white for the heaven. There was a rhythm in there. I bet you can't figure it out. Okay, Jesus then died. That's a very sad story. A few days later, a few of his friends went to the cave where his body was, and lo and behold, it was gone. He had risen. In the end, it was happy. The end. So that's according to Anita. You're going to have your own. I'm going to show you this now, okay? So just hang on. Uh, I can't hold this one up because everything is not dried into it. So here it comes. The Passion of the Christ Painting by Anita. Those are my slippers. <laughs>